Welcome to the Gastro Girl Podcast. We bring together patients, experts, and health advocates who are all here to help you optimize your health. Here's your host, Jacqueline Gollin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast episode today. Our topic is about elimination diet therapy for eosinophilic esophagitis, otherwise known as EOE. And today I've invited the amazing dietitian Amanda Lynette on the show today to walk us through the whole process of elimination diet therapy for EOE. Now, Amanda is a GI expert registered dietitian, and she's super passionate about helping individuals build a healthy lifestyle with food and reducing symptoms with evidence-based medical nutrition therapy for a variety of digestive health conditions. Now, this is a really important job, y'all. This is so important because dietitians, they need to get a lot of love in the GI space because they have a huge role. So, and we're going to even learn more about, you know, what Amanda's can do for you uh, in a couple minutes. But I just want to let you know that she is a Michigan-based consultant for GI On Demand, and she works full-time as an outpatient dietitian at Michigan Medicine with the Department of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Welcome to the show, Amanda. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. For those of our listeners who may not know what EOE is, can you just give us a brief overview of what EOE is? Yeah, so it is a chronic immune mediated disease of the esophagus. So it's a buildup of these little white blood cells called eosinophils that build up in the lining of the esophagus. And the key point is it's a chronic disease, so it does not go away. Oh, wow. Well, thanks for that overview. We actually did a podcast earlier with Dr. Millie Gupta, who did a EOE 101. So, and she mentioned elimination diets and that's your specialty. So we're going to encourage our listeners to kind of check out the basic EOE 101, and then we'll refer them to your awesome um, podcast and course on the elimination diet. So we often talk about a dietary therapy for digestive health conditions and EOE is one of them. Can you explain the elimination diet and how it works for patients with EOE? Yeah, uh, great question. So in general, I mean, EOE is kind of a newer disease. And so the elimination diet was kind of recently discovered. They started actually with doing an elemental diet in pediatric populations in the 90s. And then they went into this empiric elimination diet where you were removing the top allergens from your diet to see if it led to histologic remission of eosinophilic esophagitis, so the EOE. Um, Within these studies that were done in the early 2000s, they found that people were able to go into remission by removing They did actually the studies with the top six allergens. Um, So they were removing wheat, dairy, soy, egg, nuts, and tree nuts, and then fish and shellfish. And then since that time, um, you know, they've done more studies and they're finding, hey, we can do just a four food elimination and be a little less restrictive and still get people into remission because they are finding the root cause of what is driving up those eosinophils. Now for all of us who love eating and love food, it's a little bit, oh my God, I, that's all the things I like to eat or there are ingredients and things I like to eat. And this is, this is important. This is really important right here. You're, we're not just going to hand you a paper, right, Amanda? We're not going to give a patient, here you go, eliminate all these things from your diet. This is why it's so important to work with a GI expert registered dietitian like Amanda Lynette, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's definitely not a a forever diet. This is a a step process. So this is a way to navigate, to identify your trigger. Typically it's only one food, maybe two foods that are your triggers. It's not, you can never eat all those foods again. So that's why working with a dietitian to do it in a systematic way where we are eliminating things for a period of time, roughly six to eight weeks, and then systematically putting them back in one or one or two at a time to see what your triggers are. Oh, that makes, I mean, I don't have EOE, but just as a person who likes, you know, good food, it makes me feel a little better for our patients out there that don't worry. It's, you know, Amanda's got you and and your course is going to help. Now, how does your course walk a patient through? It's almost like working with you because you're there, your face, your beautiful face, your beautiful expertise, and you're walking us through 
So can you explain how the course would work? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So again, like you were saying, not just getting handed a piece of paper, I think that can be very overwhelming for patients if they're just told to avoid those four foods. Like most people think initially, okay, I can easily avoid dairy, wheat, egg, and soy. That's really easy. But then when you start to really think about it and how nuanced it could be, like working with a dietitian is so important. So during my course, I try to really break it down in the sense of let's, let's discuss how to pick out on a food label, how to find, you know, other words that might pop up for egg and what soy might be hiding in. Like people don't always realize that wheat could be in soy sauce and things like that. So really understanding exactly. Yeah. Oh my God, you're so right. And we also don't, you know, because of the potential restrictiveness of any kind of dietary therapy. We don't want patients to be undernourished or almost restricting so much and be afraid to eat. So a dietitian can really help you if you're eliminating something, what you can replace it with. And Amanda knows all that great stuff. You've got some, I did a sneak peek. I will tell you, she's got amazing handouts in this course, probably more than most of the courses. Uh, So it's really helpful. And you can replace it with things that don't cost an arm and a leg, right? Like you can cook uh, brownies without eggs and use applesauce instead, you know, instead of buying some expensive egg replacer. So taking my course, we kind of will discuss ways to navigate and talk about things you can eat without spending an arm and a leg while doing it and still getting well nourished and, you know, getting all your micronutrients, macronutrients in. Now, if a patient was, how does the course compare to a patient working with you directly? And then sometimes insurance doesn't cover us to work with one-on-one with a dietitian and we don't want to slight patients. So that's why we've developed these courses with, with uh, dietitians like yourself. So how does it compare, you know, does someone feel like, well, I really want to work with a dietitian, but I maybe can't afford it. How does this course um, fit the bill here? Yeah, I really feel like I tried to touch all the bases of how exactly I would do a one-on-one appointment with a patient. So I feel like I am providing the same care. These courses are great for someone wanting to start off on the diet. I think the only part is during the reintroduction. If someone for whatever reason doesn't respond, that would be the time when working one-on-one with a dietitian would really be beneficial rather than just like putting your arms up in the air and saying, this didn't work. I need to go to medication. Yeah, no, I love that. And, you know, we have on GI on demand, you're on the platform and you don't have to have commit to like a year of, of, of meetings with a dietitian. Maybe it's just working through some of the reintroductions to make you feel a little more confident in your choices and, and maybe writing your questions during the elimination. How many weeks is the elimination diet? We typically recommend six to eight weeks for the elimination. So my courses are well set up that you would feel confident and wouldn't need that one-on-one during that initial phase. And then you, I'm sure you guide them into like keeping track of things. So they remember what may be a trigger, but after that six to eight weeks, you, you could reach out to a dietitian to answer those questions. We have an online community um, that's education oriented. So we can't really address specific health issues to the person, but general questions, like if it's a, what can I replace egg with in a recipe or what can I replace soy with? Those are great questions to ask in the community. And that's at no charge either. Yeah. So yeah. this is, or, okay, sorry. I'm no, so I excited. Say, yeah. I, I was going to say, absolutely. I heard questions, simple questions like, is soy less than okay? You know, sometimes people just have little questions like that. So this is great. So now that we understand what we're going to expect in the course, and it could be, it's done on demand. So you can stop and start at your leisure. It doesn't expire. Uh, so that's wonderful. But who, who would benefit from taking this course? We don't want just anyone to say, I'm going to take an elimination diet. I definitely think someone that has been diagnosed with EOE and wants to get down to the root cause because Diet therapy at this time is the only therapy that is known to find, to identify the root cause of EOE, where medication therapy is just kind of putting a, a bandaid. It's suppressing the eosinophil, so it is controlling it, but you're going to have to be on medication the rest of your life, where if you do this course and identify your trigger, 
you may just have to avoid dairy the rest of your life, which to me sounds a lot better than having to be on steroids. Oh, totally. And, you know, we're really grateful that you did this course because we've been getting so many emails and, and inquiries about uh, the elimination diet. And this is really important. And I know you have a, you have an intro one too, don't you, Amanda on there? It's free. So before you want it, if you want it, before you commit to the paid three-part series. Yeah. So my introduction is great. So you can really better understand, you know, the rate, the studies behind it, the science behind it. Um, I discuss again, the, the step process of reintroduction, the research that shows that up to 70% of people do go into remission with the elimination diet. So the intro kind of gives you the background and the confidence before jumping into the diet therapy. Yeah, it's a great overview and she has some wonderful slides and tips and everything. But speaking of tips, what tips do you have for maybe parents of younger adults or younger children? Um, do you recommend that they follow this? Is this something that a parent of a younger child would follow or do they need a different protocol? I think definitely parents of children can do it. I think the child should be old enough to understand that when they're in the, like a school setting or outside of the home to be aware of like not sharing foods and everything. But I think actually children are sometimes could be easier because the parents are controlling what's going into them and they don't have, you know, as much social pressures or traveling for work and things like that. It's a little, I feel like it's almost could be easier to control because the parents are putting what's going in their lunchbox. And as long as they are aware not to swap it out at lunch, they, they should be doing pretty well. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the parents and the, and the children, because we did an awesome podcast with um, a mother and son, and the son was diagnosed as an infant. And he acts like it's no big deal. His mom was more stressed out and <laughs> trying to figure out what to do with him. But it, it's a great example of, um, of a parent child relationship of trying to manage a chronic condition like EOE. And you think that the child would have more of a problem and then the parent was more challenged that like you just said it was easier for the child and he now as a as an adult he, it's just part of his life and he's thriving and doing well and it's a you can listen firsthand but again we want to stress that the child should have been should be diagnosed with EOE we don't just want the parent to just start doing the elimination diet on their child correct they should be diagnosed and they should be working closely with the GI specialist i mean i i didn't emphasize that enough, but I, this is definitely something that you can take this course and it's great, but you need to be working with your provider through this. They need to be notified so they can be monitoring you. This isn't something we just blindly do. We want to be scheduling scopes during the reintroduction to make sure your disease is still in remission. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's my next question. So <laughs> Amanda just mentioned scope and, and, and endoscopy, and we're going to get to why that's important. But the, the registered dietitians that we work with are part of a, care, a really important part of the care team. It's not an, an either or. You go to a gastroenterologist or a dietitian. It's truly a team effort, and it's very powerful to have a multidisciplinary care team, which includes a registered dietitian or a, and a GI psychologist at oftentimes and a gastroenterologist um, and maybe others as needed. But you mentioned the scoping. Now this, there's some you know, questions around this uh, on insurance coverage and how many times you have to go for these scopes and the purpose of the scope. So can you just kind of give us a general um, explanation of the role of, you know, you do the elimination and then you get a scope and what that cadence is like? Yeah, yeah. So I definitely think this is where the team all comes in together. You know, this is, I think patients actually enjoy it. And I find it kind of fun because it's not just like, this is what you're doing, walk away. And like you said, it's one or the other. You have this group surrounding you to help you work through it. So after the initial elimination, we do say that we want you to get scoped and doing, you know, the biopsies again to make sure you're in remission before moving on to the reintroduction phase. The reason that is, is because symptoms don't always correlate with actual histologic remission. So we want to be checking that. So, you know, making sure your insurance is going to cover these scopes, working with, you know, calling your insurance company, making sure you have the right medical diagnosis, 
like you were saying before, not just blindly going doing it. And then when you reintroduce, we do recommend and say that you have to get scoped after each reintroduction for the same reason. You know, you could say, oh, I feel fine. I don't feel any, any different than the elimination phase, but there could be a huge increase in your eosinophils. And then it kind of, we, we aren't aware. So. So when you talk about a histologic response, you're talking about inflammation and oftentimes you could feel good, but you're, you, it, a scope could see, yeah, you know, you're still having this inflammation. There's an abundance of these eosinophils or <laughs> all those yeah. fill stuff that <laughs> goes on in your, in your body, but no, it's an important point. It's a very important point. Absolutely. You might be feeling better because there is less inflammation and, oh, I can now swallow steak. No problem but you could still have a quite an elevated number of eosinophils. Well, this has been so informative, Amanda. Before we let you go, I know you're really busy. Some tips for providers on, you know, when to offer this course as an alternative, you know, to kind of see if it works for them. Like, what do you, what do you suggest to, for providers? Yeah, I think being very transparent with the patient and kind of explaining that, this isn't just avoid these foods forever. There is a process of reintroduction. There will be some scopes. So up front, it is a, a little work. Like it's going to take a, several months up front. However, you know, explaining once you identify it, you, you, there's, there's more of like that maintenance phase long-term and just making sure they're aware of that and seeing if that works for their lifestyle. Like if they're a flight attendant and they're, never home and stuff, you know, being transparent and explaining how many scopes they're going to need and how long you're going to be on the elimination is an important thing. Oh, this has been great, Amanda, and really appreciate your coming on the show today. And uh, can't wait to check out your course. I hope everyone goes to education.giondemand.com uh, or giondemand.com and look for our education courses and Amanda's uh, wonderful EOE courses. Thanks uh, again. And don't forget to rate and review us on your favorite podcasting app so we can continue providing this platform uh, for, for these patients and these amazing GI experts like Amanda. So thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited and I hope that more and more people get into diet therapy for EOE. Oh, you're well, keep, we'll keep doing these educational um, events and letting people know how important the role of a GI expert registered dietitian is. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for listening to the Gastro Girl podcast. For more information and resources, please visit gastrogirl.com. Do you have a question for Gastro Girl? Please email podcast at gastrogirl.com. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in the Gastro Girl podcast are not a substitute for medical advice from your healthcare professional. Please consult a licensed clinician in your state regarding all matters related to your health.